Hello everyone, welcome to an incredibly wet Suzuka in R Factor 2. I'm back to give the rookies Alpine Cup another try, and this rain is going to cause absolute mayhem today. Last week at Lime Rock Park, I hardly put a foot wrong, but here at Suzuka, I'm hardly going to put a foot right. I've been placed in the top split. That combined with the difficult conditions and the fact that I'll be starting from so far back on the grid means that I'm going to be facing a real challenge today. I qualified in 19th, more than three seconds slower than the pole position man, Angel Banagas. We're racing the shorter but tricky Suzuka West layout today and we're now just seconds away from 28 cars tearing through 130R for the first time in the wet weather. This one is going to be chaos. Oh, that early starter horn caught me out a bit. I was expecting there to be a bit more of a countdown like we got at Lime Rock Park last week, but no, not at Suzuka. One blast and we're underway. Fernando Garcia was certainly more awake than us on the start line. He wasted no time getting by. However, we were able to get around Herrick Savino in front of us, right into 130R for the first time. Oh, there is mayhem as predicted cars everywhere. Another one coming right across our path. We managed to lift at just the right time to avoid contact. It looks like several drivers behind weren't as lucky, but we got through it. We're up to 15th. Oh, and if ever there was a warning over how slippery this track surface is, that was it. The rear stepped right out as we got back on the gas, rejoining the Grand Prix circuit. Thankfully, we managed to keep it facing in the right direction, but we have lost one position as a result. It was Adria Segura who took full advantage. He's moved up to 15th position. We're down to 16th. However, we are right behind Segura now. Thankfully, we only lost a couple of tenths from that half spin. Into the hairpin for the first time. Segura apexes it really early. That means he's going to be wider on exit. That's going to allow us to pull alongside. But we're going to be on the outside into this tricky chicane section. We've just about got the pass done. But we're going to run it in a little bit too deep. We're out onto the grass. Clip the gravel. We're all over the place. There's a car facing the wrong way on track. We're out in the dirt. We've lost a couple of places. I think we're going to lose one more. Because Savino has got a lot more pace than us. He goes by on the outside. So let's at least take the defensive line into spoons so we can try and stop Jasper Seibert from getting through as well. We've just about managed to do that, it looks like. We've held Seibert off at least, but we're down to 17. Well, I said that that half spin earlier in the lap was a warning sign. Unfortunately, I didn't heed the warning. I got it all wrong going into that chicane. I was trying to hang it out a little bit wider to get around Segura, clip the gravel, and I was all over the shot. Now we're going to come under attack again from Cyber into 130R. Is he going to tuck it up the inside? There's a little bit of contact. It pushes us out onto the curb. Oh, we've just about held onto the position. Now is Cyber going to think about having another look up the inside? He isn't, but Alexandra Doro is. Where has Doro come from? He had a real late dive up the inside there. Doro out of nowhere. But thankfully, he wasn't able to make it stick. Well, it looked like complete carnage in my rearview mirror at the start of the race. So let's check out the replay. 130R, lap one. We're watching Francesco Gervasio lose all grip going into that high-speed corner. He's completely out of control. And then he gets ploughed into by several cars. Yes, it was chaos. And how lucky were we to get through that one unscathed? I suspected that the wet weather would cause some mayhem on lap one, and so it proved. Let's ride on board with one of the bat markers now. This should give us a better view of the incident. Complete devastation. Look at that. No fewer than eight cars involved. The driver who I almost hit was Alex Abreu. Now, Alex went off track to try and avoid this carnage. But, of course, as soon as he got onto the wet grass, he lost control. He's going to slide right across in front of me. That's how close I came to being taken out there. So that was my first warning. The second warning came straight after. I lose the rear as I get on the gas coming out of that corner. That allows Segura to get past. Later in the lap and just in front of us, Jose Carlos gets a nudge coming out of the chicane. That sent him into a spin and he wasn't the only one to get it wrong through there. I was trying to get around Segura, but I ran it in too deep. I clipped the gravel on the inside. That sends me to the outside and I lose several positions. Lap two, and I'm in a bit of danger of losing touch with Savino here. He's opened up a 0.7 of a second advantage, but just as I say that, he gets a little bit sideways going under the bridge, so that has enabled us to close right back in. I don't think we've got enough extra speed to challenge, but we can put him under pressure and get right on his tail. We need to be defensive through the hairpin because I'm still getting harassed by Doro behind. But just as I was worried about this pack starting to spread out, we've closed right back in again. Watch Segura in 14th. He's running out a little bit wide into the chicane and he slides 
comes right across the path of Savinho. We've been able to take two positions there. Yeah, that mistake I made on lap one trying to get around Segura. Well, Segura has just produced a carbon copy here. He clips exactly the same patch of grass. That sends him into a slide right in front of Savinho, riding on board with Savinho now. He's got nowhere to go. He has to lift to avoid the contact, and that lets me and Doro get through. Starting lap three now, and there's a fascinating battle developing right in front of us between Gregory Tolo and Duarte Janeiro. Janeiro on the outside, Tolo thinking about a move up the inside into 130R. Is he going to make it stick? No, he thinks better of it. Janeiro gets a little bit sideways, though. He's out onto the curb. Is that going to give us an opportunity? No, it's not. Janeiro defends. And while I'm concentrating on Janeiro, Alexandra Doro attacks. Doro pounces. He makes a move up the inside to take 14th position. That sends us back down to 15th. And I should have been more prepared for that. He tried it on the previous lap, and this time he made it stick. And he's going to try the same move into Degna on Janeiro. There's a little bit of contact. Doro's not giving up, though. He's still got the inside line, and Janeiro's lost it. Janeiro spins out. Another driver spun out in sympathy as well. That's given us two places. We're up to 13th. Yeah, it was Luca Rastaccio was the other driver who spun out. Look at him on the edge through Degna there. He gets passed up the inside. He's carrying too much speed and the rear steps out on the slippery surface. Then we saw Duarte Gennaro make exactly the same mistake. He was being passed up the inside by Doro. He lost the rear too and he gets collected by a couple of other cars there. Yellow flags are out. Are we going to gain another position? There's a car on the grass on the infield, but it looks like a back marker. It is. It's Alex Abro. We saw Abro come to grief in 130R on lap one, so no position gained there. In fact, we may be under threat to lose a position because Juan Carlos is going to challenge. He's going to try and stick it up the inside into 130R. I don't think we're going to defend this one. We're going to have to let him go. He's far enough in front. And we know Carlos has got pace. He was one of the front runners. In fact, it was Carlos who spun out at the chicane shortly before I did on lap one. So we're starting the fourth lap now. I'm down to 14th, but it does look like the weather is improving. The rain has stopped, so I've been able to switch off the wipers. And hopefully we'll start to feel a little bit more grip as this track dries out. And already we can see the pace of Carlos. He's opened up a 0.7 of a second gap. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to stick with him. I'm definitely not going to be able to stick with him now because I've lost the rear coming into that right-hander. Just about managed to save it, but we've lost a bunch of positions. Jasper Seibert has gone through. Nicola Ronak has gone through. And also Harriet Savino has got past. That's put us down to 17th. Yeah, really careless error by me this one. I was just beginning to think the track was drying out, but I pushed my luck just a little bit too far through this right hand and the rear steps out and it costs me three positions. We're going to return to the live action three laps later, halfway through lap seven. And it's taken me this long to claw myself back to within half a second of Nicola Roddick in 16th. Now, fortunately for me, Roderick and Herit Savino in 15th have been locked in a pretty intense battle for the last lap or so. That's what's helped me close the gap from one and a half seconds down to 0.4 of a second now as we approach this chicane. And hopefully we've seen the last of the rain too. It certainly feels like this track is drying out now. The lap times are steadily coming down and we're only halfway through this race. So there's still all to play for here. And as we approach the final two turns of this lap, watch Savino in the bright orange car. He's going to get sideways into Spoons. That's going to cost him a load of corner speed. And it's going to invite Roddick to attack. Roddick quicker out of the corner. And as we charge down the start and finish straight, they're side by side in the battle for 15th position. Hopefully this is going to do us a big favour. They're either going to slow each other down and let us catch up to them, or they're going to take each other out. Roddick thinks better of a move up the inside into 130R, but watch Savinio on exit. He's going to run it out too wide. He's on the runoff area. He's going to rejoin, but he's going over the grass. That's going to affect his breaking point. He's surely not going to get this stopped. He doesn't. He's out onto the grass on the left. That gives us a position. We're up to 16th, and we're right on Roddick's tail now. Yeah, it looks like Savinho was feeling the pressure under attack from Roddick. He missed the apex into 130R, gets out to the runoff area, then clips the grass. He can't break until he's back on the track, and by that time it's too late. Savinho out at turn two. We're approaching the end of lap 10 now. We've already seen Nicola Roddick apply pressure through spoons. This time it's Jasper Seibert who's coming under attack, and it's almost an identical move. 
Cybert was just a little bit wide going through that final turn. It's opened up a gap on the inside. Roderick won't need a second invitation to try and make the pass. They're side by side going down the start finish straight. Roderick once again decides to tuck back in behind. This is exactly what happened a few laps ago with Savino. It's even a bright orange car that we're watching. Now is Cybert going to make the same mistake and run out wide through 130? Ah, he is! Now is he going to be able to get it stopped into T2? Savino couldn't, but it looks like Cybert might just get it stopped. He has done. But that has slowed down Roddick considerably, and that's brought me right back into play. There's now just 0.6 of a second separating the three of us. Four minutes of the race left, so there's still time. And it looks like Cybert is rattled. He's out onto the gravel again. Is he even going to make this right-hander? He just about keeps it on track. Roddick challenges, but Cybert is going to have the inside line for the hairpin. Meanwhile, I'm faster than the pair of them, but there's just no way through. I'm going to move to the outside. Maybe we can carry some extra speed around the wider line. No, we can't. Cyber is really quick on exit. They're still side by side approaching the chicane. And Cyber's running in too hot. Roddick's surely going to make the pass, but Roddick's gone out wide onto the grass. There's contact, and we get by the pair of them. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. We took full advantage of that contact. We haven't shaken Cyber off yet. Cyber's on the inside coming into Spoons. Can we get this line sealed off? It looks like we have double up to 14th, but we run out too wide. We're on the curb. Cyber's surely going to get back through, and so does Roddick. Oh, I'm my own worst enemy at times. I did so well to get past both these guys and then the very next corner. I can't quite get the apex. I leave a gap and the pair of them jump right back through. We're back down to 16th where we were half a lap ago. But all is certainly not lost. As long as these two guys keep battling in front, we've still got a chance to get in the top 15. Roddick still all over the rear end of Cybert. Cybert's going to defend into turn two. Once again, we close right back in on the pair of them through this tight, tricky section. We're back onto the GP circuit now, approaching Degna. Nicola Roddick looking really eager now to try and find a way past Jasper Cybert. Cybert's defending brilliantly though. There's no way through at the moment as we approach this right-hander to go under the bridge. Now it's the charge to the hairpin. And who says you can't have fun fighting for the minor positions? This is a fantastic race and I'm not even in the top 15. I'm going to try and run it out wide around Roddick again. That doesn't work, but we're so close now. And we know from previous laps that absolutely anything can happen at this chicane. There's a little bit more of a gap between us this time, so I suspect the three of us will get through safely. That's a relief. So we've got two minutes left on the clock, approaching the end of lap 12. We're going to get two more laps after this one. So that's two more laps to try and force our way into the top 15. Oh, but we're just running it out a little bit wide once again into Spoons. We're out onto the curb and that is going to cost us a valuable 10 for 2. We've let it slip here. Oh, let's watch this again. This was the chicane on the previous lap. Roddick out onto the grass, runs into Cyber, and I make the opportunistic lunge up the inside to get past the pair of them. And at this point, all I need to do to make 14th position my own is to seal off the line into this left-hander, but I don't do it. I miss the apex. I run out onto the curb. Look at the gaping hole on the inside. Both of them jump through, and we're back down to 16th. Starting the final lap then, it looks like that mistake has cost us any hopes of a top 15 finish. We're now one and a half seconds behind Roddick in 15th. But look at Cyber once again. He's run wide through 130R. There might be a sniff of an opportunity for me if he can't get it stopped. But instead he tries to tuck it up the inside of Roddick. Roddick almost gets pushed out onto the grass. The gloves are off on the final lap here at Suzuka. But incredibly, we've been given a second chance at a possible top 15. We were one and a half seconds behind going into 130. Oh, but that gap is now 0.3 of a second. We're going to swarm over the rear end of that orange Alpine. We've seen Cybert get rattled on a couple of occasions. He's made a few mistakes. Can we pressure him into another one coming into the hairpin? It doesn't look like we can. He's held the apex. So now maybe my next hope is that he makes an error into this chicane again. We've seen all sorts go on through this section, but it looks like we're going to get through smoothly. And I'm quickly running out of opportunities here. We've only got two more corners to go. The gap is almost 0.4 of a second now. We might not be close enough to challenge coming into Spoons. 
It looks like Rodex got 14th position sewn up. That gap's a second now. And as I say now, Simon's out wide onto the curb. This is our last chance. We dive up the inside. Can we get ourselves in front of that orange car before we get on the straight? Yes, we have done. And now it's a drag race to the line. Simon's going to pick up some tow, but it's not enough. We cross the line to take 15th position. What a race. Well, I've got to feel a little bit of sympathy for Jasper Cyber here because he made exactly the same mistake that I've done on a couple of occasions through this final section. Runs out onto the curb. Once you get onto that green stuff, it's so difficult to turn it back in. Yeah, that was one of those races where I was almost disappointed to see it was the last lap. It was such great fun out there. I just wanted to carry on racing. Yes, the rain threw a spanner in the works. And yes, there were mistakes, lots of them. But that 20 minutes just flew by. In the end, we had to settle for 15th place. A slight increase to the yellow rating, which is good to see. And an even bigger increase to the safety rating, which I have to say, I'm quite surprised about, given the amount of times I was spinning or running off track. So am I as excited about R Factor 2 after my second race? Well, the answer to that question is simple. Yes, I am. This was brilliant. The car is so much fun to drive. The track was fantastic, made for some really good racing. And if you were impressed with this Suzuka layout, I'd urge you to check this race room video I did a few months ago. It was absolutely bonkers. But for now, it's farewell from Suzuka. Thank you ever so much for watching again. And I'll be back on the grid for another one very, very soon. Cheers for now.